let's start like what we are going to see in the webinar today's webinar so first of all we are going to start with why study blockchain like we have to understand why to study blockchain before starting blockchain i think this is very important aspect whenever we are starting with any course like why we are actually studying it so first of all we will see that then we are going to talk about the story of bitcoin like because this will help us to understand why actually blockchain got so famous so we will understand the story of bitcoin then we are going to talk about what is blockchain its application how blockchain works its visual demo we are going to see a visual demo of how blockchain actually works then we are going to talk about mining which is i think is the most difficult topic or is the most misunderstood topic misunderstood topic for most of the people so we are going to talk about mining then we are going to talk about decentralized application like how decentralized application work and after that video we are going to see how to become a blockchain developer because decentralized application means to understand this decentralized application is very crucial because we are going to take it this as a reference point to understand how and why how to become a blockchain developer okay so we are going to talk about that then we are going to talk about the salary like what is the salary of blockchain developer how to get a job in this domain and what are the scams that are going on this web3 world there are a lot of scams that are going on in this web3 world so we are going to talk about the scams that are going on we are then going to talk about the resources for blockchain like what are the resources where you can to, uh, like study about blockchain which books to refer watch documentation to refer for so we are going to talk about that and then we are going to talk about whether it is the right time to study blockchain or not because this is the most like asked topic like whether i should go for blockchain should i wait for like uh, for some time the to study blockchain because it is a new technology right so we are have some fears so we are going to talk about whether it is the right time to study blockchain or not okay so let's start with why study blockchain <clears throat> now to study blockchain like why to study blockchain we are going to understand the story of internet because this will help us to understand what internet was actually lacking and what actually blockchain is bringing to the table so we are going to understand the story of internet so let's start so if we talk about earlier days like how people used to communicate in earlier days in earlier days people used to communicate with the help of pigeons right they use pigeons like in harry potter movie if you have seen harry potter movie like harry potter and all those people start use owl to communicate with each other in the same way pigeons were used for communication purposes after some time we started using these mailboxes like we started writing letters to our friends and all those things to our relatives and now what we are using is we are using internet now what actually internet has done for us is internet has made our communication part very easy now we can send mail to any of our friend we can talk to our friend we can uh, like we can connect to thousands of people in just a fraction of second and all this is because of internet so what internet has done for us it has made our communication part very easy now we can easily communicate with anyone like whether he belongs to like usa whether he belongs to any other part of the country it doesn't matter we can communicate with him but what internet was lacking or what internet is actually lacking is the trust part we cannot trust the internet and let us understand this with the help of an example let's say this is an ngo and you want to donate some money to this ngo so you actually did a internet transaction or an online transaction like in india we use upi there are various other transaction method you want to donate some like money to this ngo and you donate it through internet but the problem is you do not know what this ngo is actually doing with your money you do not know like whether this money is being used for charity like whether this money is used for child education whether this money is actually used for women safety or not what they are using this money for we do not know so this is a big question mark on this ngo like how they are utilizing our money so we cannot trust this right so at this point of time what technology can be used for trust purposes now at this point of time what we can use is we can use blockchain now blockchain is a technology that can provide us with trust so just like internet internet is a disruptive technology and it has disrupted the world of communication now we can easily communicate with each other in the same way blockchain provides us with trust and both communication and trust are very like very crucial part of human interaction right we need to communicate with other person so that we can have a good relationship we need to trust other person so for that we have blockchain so this is what blockchain is bringing to the table it is bringing trust to the table so do we have any questions like till now or are we clear 
I hope there are no questions. So I am moving further. So now let's talk about history of Bitcoin. Like what is the history of Bitcoin and how blockchain start like started getting popular. So it's all started in year 2008, like in USA, when the US economy was going down. Nearly 9 million people lost their job and 1.8 million businesses just closed down. If we talk about the Wall Street, that is the stock market of USA, that is like at that time in 2008, it was in, on its knees. Means the situation of US economy was very bad during 2008. A lot of recession was going on. So the situation was very bad and you can understand the situation. Lehman Brothers, one of the billion dollar evaluation bank was closed. And the people were on the street because all their savings, all their money that was into the stock market, uh, their like, you know, about their, their retirement money, their child education money, everything was just gone. And this was all was happening just because of the foolishness of banks. Now banks and US government, I will say. So banks did something that led to this huge recession. And US government was supporting these banks. US government was actually providing money to these banks so that they can survive. Just imagine a situation like these because of these banks, we have a situation just like this. And US government was supporting these type of banks. And you can see that we have various banners like we have people are calling them fools. Here you can see that we have people calling them fools. There is a term called bailout, which we are going to understand it. So you can see that people are revolting against this, like this US recession and this government and these banks. So now let's see what actually these banks did at that particular time. So banks are just like businesses, like when they will lend you some money, they make profit on it. When they will lend some money, let's say 100, they, they charge you some 10%, 20% interest on it. And that's how they make profit. So in 2008 or while 2008, these banks got a little greedy or a lot of greedy. So what they did, they started giving money to the people who were not capable enough to return back the money. So you must be thinking like why they started giving money to the people who are not, who are not capable of giving the money back because they got greedy. They thought that the people who are actually taking money from us, they are eventually going to pay it back. So that's, they were, that's, they was thinking uh, like, they were thinking like that at that particular time. So they got greedy, but what actually happened that these people never written back the money. And this led these banks to be suffered. Like they got into a big loss a big loss and because when banks go to loss the u.s economy started going down and at that time u.s government instead of questioning these banks they started pumping money to these banks they started giving money to these banks even though it was the mistake of the banks that led to this financial crisis of 2008 and it has impact till now also so now question arises can we trust our banks or can we trust our government for finance related things and the answer is simply no, right? That's what led to the 2008 crisis. And 2008 crisis is one of the recent crises. There are various crises that has happened in the past. And that's all because of the government and because of the banks that got greedy. And you can watch this movie. This is a good movie. If you want to understand the situation of this whole scenario, what was going on. So you can watch this movie. I hope you know this guy. This is from Batman. I like this guy. So you can watch this movie. This is a good movie for this to understand what was going on in 2008. So now during this time, like when 2008 crisis was going on in USA, at that time, Bitcoin was born. Satoshi Nakamoto was the person who invented Bitcoin and nobody knows who was Satoshi Nakamoto, whether he's a person, he's a, you know, a group of person, male, female, nobody know who is Satoshi Nakamoto. But Satoshi Nakamoto was the person who actually invented Bitcoin. And what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency. And here's an important word to note. It is a decentralized digital currency. So it is also a currency just like your currency. Like in India, we have rupees and US, we have dollars, right? In the same way, it is also a currency without a central bank or single administrator means it does not require any administrator like we have like for us dollar we have us government for india like for indian rupees we have indian government like to like print these money and these currencies actually but for bitcoin we do not require any of these that can be sent from user to user on the peer to peer bitcoin network i'm going to tell you what is this without the need for intermediaries so bitcoin is also a currency 
The only difference is it is not controlled by any central authority. It is totally decentralized. And here is an important point. Like what is this peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network? Let me tell you. Like, for example, we have two types of architecture. We have a server client architecture and we have a peer-to-peer -peer architecture. Like, uh, for example, let me tell you. Let's say this is our YouTube. And sorry for my writing. It is not that good. I know. This is our YouTube. Okay. So this is a YouTube server, actually. And this is us. We are clients. Let's say if I have if I have to watch some video, okay. So what I will do, I will request from YouTube. YouTube, please give me that video. I want to watch that video. And then YouTube will provide us with a response and will provide us with that video. So this is what we call as a server client model. So here you can see that we have to be dependent on YouTube, a central authority for like for all our data, right? For all our videos, everything. But in a peer-to-peer -peer network, what actually happens is like we have set of peers okay so let's say these are set of peers in different part of the world or so wherever they are and let's say this has some data let's say this has some movie or let's say picture this has some let's say document some doc file and let's say this peer or peer let's say you can see that the uh, docket as a friend only so let's say this peer wants some document so what he will do he will request the document from this peer and this peer will provide him with the document or let's say this peer wants some video so he can request from this and he will get the video or let's say this wants some document from this so he will call this and he will request like he will respond him with the document so here you can see that we do not have any central authority or any central government or something like that we have a decentralized type of network right we are not dependent on like on any single entity we have so many like in this example definitely i have shown you only four uh, four clients or four computers definitely there can be many many and many thousands lakhs of computers in a peer to peer network so we are not solely dependent on any particular server or any particular central authority so this is the beauty of bitcoin and which we are going to talk about it a little more in our upcoming videos like in our upcoming slide and it is all based on blockchain technology so like bitcoin is a cryptocurrency and it is based on let me uh, remove this okay so it is a it is a cryptocurrency and it uses this blockchain technology for this whole purposes okay and what is blockchain technology we are going to see that so from this example you can clearly see that when we talk about our currency right when we talk about our us dollar about our indian rupees so this is totally dependent on the government right this is totally dependent on the government if the government does not exist this currency will not exist but when we talk about Bitcoin, this is not with the case of Bitcoin. When we talk about Bitcoin, this is dependent on this mathematical proofs, mathematical equations or algorithms. And do not worry, we do not need to know any uh, mathematical problems. We do not need to solve any mathematical problems or equations. It is just to tell you that Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, like some of the cryptocurrencies are actually based on these algorithms. And these algorithms are open source. So they are totally transparent. You can see them whenever you want. And we are going to see that also like Bitcoin open source code. So this is how Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency works. So this is dependent on any, not any, like you can clearly see that we are this Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is not dependent on any government or any central authority. It is totally dependent on a mathematical proof. So just like we have gravity, right? Like whenever we throw a ball, it will always come down because of the gravitational pull. In the same way, Bitcoin algorithm work like that only. So you can see that algorithm, how it works and everything. So do we have any questions like before moving further? So we do not have any questions. Okay, so I am moving further. So now let's talk about what is blockchain. <clears throat> so here you can see that we have a figure of blockchain, right? We have these blocks. These blocks are connected with some links. So this is a blockchain. But what is the definition of blockchain? Blockchain is a distribution. By that, let us understand the meaning of this ledger then this immutable and then this distributed. Now, what is the meaning of this distributed immutable ledger? So what is the ledger? So ledger is a place where actually transactions are recorded. Like for example, you might have seen some shopkeepers who actually write their credit and debit, like whatever they are buying, whatever they are selling, everything on a register or on a notepad. 
in the same way if you have let's say gone to mcdonald's or any other a uh, restaurant you might have seen that they have a computer so whenever they are giving you some change or whenever you are paying them they type everything on their computer so that they can note all your transaction in their database in the same way in the blockchain world we have block of the blockchain and this block of the blockchain is the one which is actually recording all that transaction that's why it is called a ledger like for example uh let's say a wants to send some 2 bitcoin to b so this transaction will be recorded on this block of the blockchain okay and the best part of this block of the blockchain is like uh, what is the difference between these two ledger is that this block is completely immutable like you cannot make changes to this block of the blockchain you cannot erase that data you cannot manipulate the data that is present in the block of the blockchain but when it comes to this these ledgers when we talk about this ledger book for example anybody can no manipulate the data right anybody can erase the pen or anybody can tore off the paper or anybody who is actually having the authority over this database can do some manipulation in this database right so this are the like these are what we call as a mutable ledgers but this is a immutable ledger so we have two givers clear ledger because it writes we can write transaction on it second immutable because once any transaction is written on top of the blockchain we cannot remove it or we cannot change it now let's talk about distributed why we call it as a distributed technology so this is a blockchain network or a bitcoin network whatever you want to call and you here you can see that each of these abc these are this is a peer to peer network this is how a peer 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 to peer network looks like okay and we have a b c e f and each of them have a blockchain and each of them has the exact copy of the blockchain like a is having this a copy of the blockchain so b is having the same copy of the blockchain e c f everyone has the exact copy of the blockchain okay now in this case let's say uh, a wants to create a block and how this is done we are going to talk about it for now just understand that a wants to create some block or a wants to do some transaction so what will happen a block will be attached to this blockchain now once a block will be attached to this blockchain this block will be verified and validated by all these people like by the b c e f means whosoever is the part of this bitcoin network all of them will verify and validate with this block whether this block is right or not whether it is correct or not and once the verification and validation is done this block will be distributed across all over the network just like this and that's why blockchain is distributed so it is just like having a copy like a is having a ledger and now a is distributing this ledger all over the network so that's why we call it as a distributed ledger so i hope it is very much clear like why we call it as a distributed immutable ledger and why it is called transparent because each and every transaction that is happening on blockchain is a completely transparent you can see all the transactions that are present on top of the blockchain that's why it is completely transparent so do we have any questions till now uh, or i should move further so one uh, one doubt uh, if uh, i maintain my ledger and hmm. what is the point sharing among others other also because it is a private thing right okay so okay. why we are sharing to different different you know um, um, unknown people i guess according to the system looks see whatever uh, like ledger you are going to share with everyone right so that mm -hmm. ledger will be completely in, in a encrypted form so nobody can see what is inside that ledger it is just uh, like you can think of it as an encrypted text will be for forwarded to all the people and why do we do that it is to maintain this immutability because this is concept related mm -hmm. to immutability only because let's say some hacker wants to let's say let me tell you uh, okay from from here let's say someone wants to change this data okay let's say someone tries to change this data so we have these different set of nodes who will be validating and verifying these node right so when they will verify and validate it node then they will say okay this is not right there is some issue with it so what they will do they will copy their transactions or whatever data they have and they will paste it to this ledger or to this blockchain so that's why we have this multiple sources to have the copy of the data so that data can be everywhere something like like that so if let's say some day this fails also we have our data with this with this and with this no okay. yes anyone has any other question uh yeah uh, hi shitesh uh, hi 
uh, actually, uh, I have a question that if we are storing like same data on five different servers, it isn't it uh -huh. really inefficient? Uh, so the same data, like right, five right. different servers, yeah. Definitely. Like if we talk about end scenario, definitely it is insufficient. That's why you will not see much of decentralized application. The problem is with this structure is that it is a little bit, uh, what I will say, not that scalable at this point of time. Like, for example, let's say you want to make a node. OK, so in that case, what you have to do is you have to install a software and that software will be like downloading about like terabyte system. So definitely, if you want to be a part of this type of blockchain, if you want to be the part of this type of Bitcoin network, definitely you need some like you need to provide some hardware and all those things. So that's the issue with blockchain technology at current time. But definitely, who knows, it will be rectified in the future. OK, thanks. Yes. <clears throat> Anyone else have any question? <clears throat> OK. So I am moving further. I think no one has any question. OK. OK, so now let's talk about what is the difference between blockchain and Bitcoin, because I know these two terms are very much confusing, like blockchain. Then we are talking about Bitcoin. Are these things the same? OK, so when we talk about blockchain, the so blockchain is a technology and that's what we define blockchain. It is a distributed immutable ledger. But when we talk about Bitcoin, right, when we talk about Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a protocol or means when I say protocol, it means rules and regulation. Like, for example, we have HTTP protocol, we have TCP IP protocol. So these are the rules, right, which governs the Internet world in the same way when we call Bitcoin. So it is a protocol. We have waves. This is also a protocol. We have Ethereum. This is also a protocol. So the, all these things comes into the category of protocol. Now, what these protocol actually do? So these protocol actually define how people over the network will communicate with each other. Let's say we have different set of peers, how they are going to communicate with each other, how the miner will be able to solve their problems. Like when there is a mathematical problem to solve, which we are going to talk about in like in our upcoming slides. So how they are going to solve those problems? What are they going to like? Uh, what level of difficulty they have to solve for? So all these things are actually defined in the protocol section. And let me show you this going to the Bitcoin repository. So this is a Bitcoin source code. This is completely open source. Let's say if you are not trusting this code, like you are thinking, OK, I do not know what this Bitcoin source code is all about, whether Satoshi is cheating us. So definitely you can come to this Bitcoin source code and you can refer this and see this, whether like how this all is working. Uh, let me show you this chain params or CPP. <clears throat> so here you can see that we have different rules and regulation, everything mentioned here. How to create a Genesis block. Uh, we are going to talk about this. So each and every detail, each and every rules and regulations related to this Bitcoin protocol is defined in these files only. So in the, like this, we have Bitcoin source code in the same way if we have for Ethereum. If you will go for Ethereum source code, you can definitely find it on internet. So these are all protocols. Okay. So it is like, let me give you an example for this also so that you can understand this better. Like it is like we YouTube, YouTube is a technology. Okay. Like YouTube is a technology. And let's say um, me and my friend are making some different set of videos, right? So whatever my friend is going to make is will be different from me. But at the end, we are going to use the same technology, this YouTube for uploading our video. So this is like, like, like this is just an example to understand like what is this protocols. So we can have in like various protocols which are based on this blockchain technology. Definitely you can create your blockchain also, but that is a very tedious process, but definitely you can do that also. So do we have any questions about this topic? Uh, like what is blockchain and what is Bitcoin? What everything is clear. Okay, so, you know, those coins uh, protocol you said. Yeah. Yes. No. So these are some kind of rules that is being, you know, uh, what do what we can say imposed yeah uh, so so the current in, in uh, current scenarios like you know everybody's trading bitcoin and all things right. so actually they are trading these uh, protocols see you there understand. is one more thing when we talk about protocols there is one more thing tokens okay mm -hmm. so like for example ethereum has its token bitcoin do not have any token so when you are trading right so in when you are trading you 
uh, if you have seen any, let, let me show you uh, one wine market cap. I think this is the website. Uh, okay. Let me show you. Yeah. So this is our website, right? This is coin market cap where trading is done. So here you can see that we have this cryptocurrency tab. Uh, like we have selected this cryptocurrencies tab, right? And here you can see that we have a lot of cryptocurrencies. So when we talk about cryptocurrencies, we are actually talking about coins and tokens. So in this case, in this case, we talked about coins, right? But we haven't talked about token because this is not the part of this webinar. But let me show you one thing. Filter out. And let me go for a... Um, where it is. Add filter. So when I will click on this all cryptocurrencies, you can see that we have this coins and we have this tokens. Okay. So now the question is when you are trading, so you have to figure out whether you are actually trading for the protocol or whether you are trading for the token. So this oh. is the thing that I want to share. I hope you understand it. Like if I will select tokens, let me show you one, thing, one more. When I will select tokens, uh, coins, you will see that we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? But mm -hmm. when I will select tokens let's say so now you can see that we do not have bitcoin or ethereum because these are all protocols so this is like whenever you are trading so you have to keep in mind whether what you are actually investing or trading for okay okay oh, Got it. This is made. okay so anybody anyone like anyone has anyone like anyone has any other questions okay so let's move to our another part of the video blockchain applications so if we talk about blockchain applications we have a lot of blockchain application like for example we have blockchain applications in healthcare system in financial system in supply chain management but in this video we are going to see one of the most like frequently used i will say or one of the most popular that is smart contracts okay definitely there are so many we are not going to cover every one each of them but we are going to cover about smart contracts so now let's talk about smart contracts what are smart contracts? Smart contracts are simply programs that are written on top of the blockchain. This is all like, this is it, nothing else. Smart contracts are simply programs. Like you write programs in C language, Java language, JavaScript language. So you write programs, right? In the same way, when you are talking about smart contract, you are talking about a block. And whenever you are writing a code on this block, you are calling it as a smart contract. Definitely, it has a, some fancy name, smart contract, but at the end, it is just a program. Okay. So what is the application of this smart contract? Let us understand this with the help of this example. Let's say A and B are into business. Okay. A is a supplier of fruits and B is a person who actually sold foods, sell foods. Okay. And let's say A supplies fruits to B and after A has supplied fruit to B, B pays him money. And this is how business transactions are done. Okay. But after some time, B realizes that the foods that are delivered by A are actually rotten. They are not right. They, like B cannot sell these foods. Okay. So now at this point of time, B is at loss because now he has already paid to A and now he has uh, fruits or apples, whatever you say, and they are not of the quality that he can sell, uh, sell it to the market. So now this, now how to like what B can do in this current scenario. So in this current scenario, what B can do is B can use a smart contract. And first of all, let me tell you one more thing. We are assuming that the like uh, optimum temperature for the uh, for these fruits to be kept at is less than thirty degrees Celsius. Means this is a container, right? So we are assuming that the container is uh, maintaining a temperature less than thirty degrees Celsius, so that the fruits are in in a fresh form. Okay. So this is just an assumption. Definitely, it can be anything else also. So what, uh, so in this smart contract, what we will do, uh, we are going to understand this with the help of a flow diagram. So we will have a logic, something like this. If IOT, IOT is a device which is used to detect temperature. So if IOT detected a temperature greater than 30 degrees Celsius, in that case, what we are going to do is we are going to cancel the delivery and do not pay to A. And if this is false, in that case, what we are going to do is we are going to do delivery means A will be going to deliver fruits to B and we will transfer money to A. Now, let me tell you one thing that this is a fully automated process. Like 
we do not require any intervention of A or B in this. Once a smart contract is deployed to the blockchain, this blockchain will work automatically. Another important thing is like you must be thinking, okay, but uh, someone might do some changes to the smart contract or some like, you know, like in any other programming language, we can make changes to our smart contract in our program. In the same way, in, like someone can manipulate this smart contract, but this is, cannot happen. Once a smart contract is deployed to the blockchain, that smart contract cannot be changed. This is the property of blockchain, right? It is a distributed immutable ledger. So once it is deployed to the blockchain, you cannot make changes to this smart contract. And another important point like to notice here is that whenever like when I'm talking that uh, here that money will be transferred to A, right? When I'm saying money will be transferred to A, I'm talking about the cryptocurrency. Like cryptocurrency will be transferred to A. Like B will have a wallet. In that wallet, he will have cryptocurrency. And once this transaction is successful, means when we have this case at that point from his wallet, automatically funds will be detected and will be transferred to A. So B ha do not have to do anything. Only he has to do is he has to install this smart contract with this IoT device and everything is good to go. So this is what smart contract can do. So this is one of the application of blockchain. So do we have any questions regarding this? A smart contract. It is clear why it is called smart contract because uh, you can see that we have this if and else condition like a contract. If this happens, then do this. If this happens, then do this. That's why we call it as a smart contract. So do we have any questions? Yeah, I'm not. So you said no, uh, if, if we cannot change that smart contract when it is deployed. Right. Yeah. So if, in, what if uh, no, uh, there is always you know, uh, space for change, right? So what what if uh, any, uh, the, you know, uh, the creator wants to uh, upgrade that particular contract, right? So uh, how can he do uh, if, if he want to improve that particular contract, right? So uh, so is there any other is there any method or he, he he needs to update in that particular chain? Okay, see there is no method once this is deployed to the blockchain. But definitely what they can do is they can have some functionality installed to their smart contract. Like we have logics, right? So we can have some logics like we can have a self-destruct logic type of logic. Like when we thought, okay, this smart contract is not working right. So someone will call this self-destruct function and this will destroy this smart contract. But definitely if you have not made this smart contract in such a way where you can make changes to it, so you cannot make changes to it. I hope this makes sense. Like if you have installed some mechanism, okay, if this went wrong, I will click on this button and this smart contract will be in a self-destruct mode, like self-destruct mode. Now this can be like done in various ways. But if you have that type of mechanism at that point, you can do that. But if you haven't like you haven't installed that type of mechanism to your smart contract, you cannot change it because as I said, it will be once deployed cannot be changed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, sir, the smart contract mm -hmm. is written inside the block as data, like any variable or. Okay. Uh, let me show you how this is done. So let's say you have some, uh, let's say. Uh, for example, let's say you have written your smart contract uh, in in some Visual Studio Code editor in somewhere else. Okay, now what you will do, you will do, uh, you will use like in blockchain we have some networks like a main net and a test net. Okay, so now this main you what you will do, you will just uh, there is a function like uh, definitely I have to go in depth a little bit. So let me tell you. So what you will do, you will just type one command called deploy like we have different type of uh, uh, tools for blockchain developers like we have truffle we have hardware so once you will do our deploy so what will happen this smart contract will be deployed to the blockchain so okay something like this so yeah it is a form of data only so if i will let if, let's see if we can show that like i will show you tomorrow only that how this smart contract is actually on the blockchain okay so this is a form of data only yes this is a form of data only it's clear like uh, I hope this is clear like what I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Any else like anyone else have any questions? Okay. So now I hope I'm making sense. If any of you have any questions, please do let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. Please also let me know. Okay. Okay.
So now let's talk about the blockchain working, like how actually blockchain works. How do we have a blockchain like structure? So this is a blockchain, like this is a block of a blockchain. So we have a block number, we have data. So data can be anything, transaction, smart contract, anything. We have this previous hash, we are going to talk about it. And then we have this hash. Now, what is this hash? This hash is just like a, uh, you can think of it as a unique identifier of this block. Okay, so this, with the help of this hash, you can identify this block, like how this block is actually, uh, like if you want to identify this block, you can identify this block with the help of this hash. So now let's say, uh, we have this another block and yeah, one more thing that this block is called a Genesis block. Like since this is the first block of the blockchain. So we call this as a Genesis block. Okay. Now let's say we have this another block and now here you can also see that this block is also having this hash. Okay. And in a blockchain like structure, we have seen that we have a chain of blockchain, right? In the, we have a chain of blocks, right? Now in this case, what will happen? Block number two will be pointing to this block number one. Now, how he will be pointing to this block number one, he will be pointing to this block number one with the help of the hash of this blockchain as its previous hash. So here, if you will see, we have the hash 0000 DHC42 as a previous hash of this blockchain. And this is the hash of this blockchain. So with the help of this previous hash and hash, what we are going to do is we are going to point to this blockchain, not to this block. Actually, let's say we have a block number three. So this block number three will be pointing to this block number two with the help of this block hash. So this is the hash of this block and how we do like, how do we generate this hash? I'm going to talk about it, but this is how this, this process is actually done. So this, we have this block number three and now this block number three is having this hash, this hash in its previous hash. And with the help of this, this block number three is able to point to this block number two. Okay. And this is how a blockchain is. Maintain. Definitely, we do have various other fields, but for demonstration purposes, I'm using this these fields only. So I hope this is clear, like how this, uh, this is just like a linked list. If you will see that we have a linked list, like one linked list is like one of the list is uh, actually pointing to another list and one of the list is pointing to another link. So this is like a linked list only. Now let's talk about the hashing algorithm that we are using. So what is a hashing algorithm? So let's say you have some input in the form of document, audio, video, any type of input. So what you will do is you will put this input to this hashing algorithm. And once you will put to this hashing algorithm, this hashing algorithm will provide you some hexadecimal characters. And here you can see that we have this SHA-256, right? We can have any other hashing algorithm also, but this one is the most popular, but you can also have uh, SHA, I think there's SHA-128, there's MD5. So there are various type of hashing algorithm which you can use for encryption of data. So this is how encryption of data takes place. But in this case, in like in case of blockchain, since SHA-256 is one of the most used or most famous hashing algorithm. So in case of blockchain, we use SHA-256 algorithm. So whatever data you are going to put to this SHA-256 algorithm, this is going to give you a 64 characters output, a hexadecimal character output. So this has 64 decimal, like 64 hexadecimal characters and each character is of four bits since we are talking about hexadecimal characters. And so in total, we have this 64 into four, that is 256 bits. That's why we have this 256 number. Okay. And if you are, if you do not understand this, like what this is all about, so do not worry. This is not that important. Just understand this. When we are using this SHA, like uh, this SHA-256 algorithm, this hashing algorithm, this SHA-256 algorithm is the one which is actually providing us this for these blocks. Okay. So here you can see that. And in case of blockchain, what we actually do is in case of blockchain, we have these various fields, right? Block number, data, and we, there are other fields also. We take this as an input and then we provide it to the SHA-256 algorithm. This SHA-256 algorithm then provide us with this hash okay so this is how a unique hash and remember that each block has its unique identifier means it's unique hash and this is because we have these different fields and these when we will give this as an input to this chart of this algorithm it will give a different output for each of the input that we are going to put so this is how this chart of this algorithm and this is how its hash is actually generated in terms of in case of blockchain and we can see a visual demo of this also let me show you. So this is our block, right? This is our block and this is our hash. Okay. So let's say you will see that when I will make some changes to the data of the blockchain, this block, you will see that we have a different hash here. Let me write H here. 
So here you can see that we have a different hash, a completely different hash, like to the previous one. If I will remove this again, so we have the same hash before as before 000f72. And let's say I write hello, my name is Shitish. So you can see that whenever I am inputting some data, this hash is changing again and again. So even a small change, like a small dot only, can give you a like completely different hash. That's why we have a unique date, like unique hash for each of the blocks. So do we have any questions here till now? Any questions related to this hashing algorithm to this block of the block? You said that the hash has to be unique. It has to be different yeah. from the previous hash or it has to be different from all the hashes in the blockchain, even if there are like a billion hashes. All the unique. It has to be unique. Like uh in human beings we have this fingerprints right unique fingerprints yes. for each and every human in the same way this hash will be unique for each and every block sir there uh, does it check with all the blocks it is a like a time consuming process to check all the blocks for all the hashes i think uh, like time consuming in sense uh, i do not understand like does it check that whether there has been a collision or not no, it does not need to check because this shard of this Excel algorithm is like that only. So there is a very, you can see, think of it as a very less probability of having that. Because first, the first thing to notice here is like we have these completely different sets of input fields, right? Block number can never be the same. Data can never be the same. And then previous hash can never be the same. So that's why you will always have like you are all you will always have this hash, a unique hash every time you are going to put some data to it and definitely this is like i am showing you only three fields here but definitely there are various other fields also like we have timestamps we have nonce and we have like other fields also so that's also have a huge impact on this unique identifier or this hash thank you sir okay anyone else have any questions okay <clears throat> so now let's move to the mining part i think this is the most interesting and one of the most uh, confused topics so now let's talk about mining so what is actually mining so let's say you did a transaction or you did a transaction to one of your friend okay in terms of bitcoin or bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency uh, it does not matter so once you did a transaction so this transaction will go to the pool of miners so these are called miners. Who are miners? Miners are simply person who solves a mathematical problem. Nothing else. So these are person or these are systems or node, whatever you want to call them. They solve mathematical problems. Now the second question is like, do they really solve these mathematical problem by taking this copy and pen? No, they do not do that. They have their systems. They have their like technologies. Like we have ASIC, we have GPUs. So they use these type of technologies to solve their mathematical problem. Okay. okay. So once the transaction is done, it goes to the set of miners. Now miners, we can see that we have various miners, right? So these miners start solving the mathematical problem so that they can create a block for this transaction. Now, one of the miners who solved the, like, uh, let's say this miner is the one who solved this mathematical problem first. Okay. So this is the miner who solved this mathematical problem first. So in that case, he will be able to create a block. Okay, so now this problem, since this miner has created this, uh, like this miner has solved the mathematical problems. So now he can create a block. And after this block is created, now these set of miners, like the remaining set of miners, what they will do, they will verify and validate for this block. Whether the block that is being added by the miner or being created by the miner is actually a valid block or not. Whether this miner is cheating or not. If he is cheating, then definitely discard this block. If he is not cheating, then definitely what they will do is they will add this block to the blockchain and which we have seen also when we are talking about the distributed uh, uh why blockchain is called distributed right so once the verification and validation will be done then this block will be added to the blockchain and the miner who has solved this mathematical problem will be rewarded with a cryptocurrency like in bitcoin we have bitcoins in terms of ethereum we have ether so here is a like a win-win situation for both the parties for the miners also like the person who is actually solving the problem if he solved this first then definitely he's going to get a reward and the, uh, the for the person also like who is doing this transaction because now his transaction is successfully done to the like if he a is sending some bitcoin to b now after this block creation after this block attachment b will receive these 
transaction. So this is what mining is all about. So do we have any questions related to mining? This is all mining all about, nothing else. Well, you talked about uh, smart contracts before. Right. Is this also mining a smart contract? Right, definitely. So whatever data will be there in the block of the blockchain, whatever data will be there. So they have that block of data will be mined. First of all, once this mining process will be done, then only that block will be added to the blockchain. Otherwise, it will not be added to the blockchain. Sir, so sir, there is a smart contract which generates a mathematical problem. Mm -hmm. And then once the mathematical problem is solved, then that smart contract... No, no, no. The smart contract it. does not generate a mathematical problem. Actually, this Bitcoin protocol, that's why we talk about Bitcoin protocol, right? So that Bitcoin protocols is deciding the rules and regulation of this game. Okay, so this will this Bitcoin protocol will decide what type of mathematical problem the miners need to solve. Okay, so that okay. is all dependent on the Bitcoin protocol. So miners and smart contract has nothing to, like smart contract has nothing to do with this mathematical problem. It is all dependent on the protocol. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Because now we are going to wind up. Okay, I think it's six thirty-five. We started late, but I think we have covered much of the topics and we will take then from next day, like decentralized application and blockchain developer roadmap. So is it clear? Anyone has any type of doubt related to the topics that we have discussed? Uh, for this mining part, uh, Jitesh, uh, mm -hmm. so the, the winner, do, the miner who solves the you know, particular block, mm -hmm. uh, that requires must have a, a, a high end, high end machinery, right? Right. So is it dependent on machinery uh, uh, for winning that particular reward or what? Yes, definitely. In If we talk about Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency, it, tot it is totally dependent on the machines only. That's why you will see that we have this large wa warehouse where you know, people are investing a, like tons of money just to have these mining houses. Like if you will, like China now has banned all these mining houses. But earlier you will see that we have these huge, huge houses where they have all their technologies kept and those technologies were being used for solve this mathematical problem. But in case of, let's say any other cryptocurrency, like now Ethereum is switching to proof of stake. Now in that type of cryptocurrency, you do not require, like if uh, Ethereum will switch to proof of stake, in that case, you will not require those heavy machinery in that case. Oh. And that will be a different, like different protocol, I will say. A different set of rules will be there for that game. For Ethereum, right? Right. For Ethereum only. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Like, do you have any questions related to these topics that we have discussed? And tomorrow, we are going to talk about all these topics, like about decentralized application. Please do not miss the tomorrow session because it will be an important session, especially if you want to looking for this blockchain developer uh, like how to become a blockchain developer i will be discussing about this in depth not like any other i have seen various videos but they are not talking about it in a clear way but i will talk this in a very clear way so do we have any other questions related to this like the session or any other questions sir one okay. question yes uh, sir uh, are torrent websites also a part of blockchain <clears throat> good question Actually, Torrent is not a part of the blockchain, but Torrent actually uses a peer-to-peer -peer network. Okay, so this is what blockchain also uses. So when you are using talking about Torrent, right? So Torrent is actually a type of peer-to-peer -peer network. But when we are talking about blockchain, so blockchain uses peer-to-peer -peer network, but blockchain has other advantages also, like it is distributed immutable. Now, distributed is a part of peer-to-peer -peer network only, but it is immutable. Plus it is, uh, it, it is like it computes all your transaction and there is various other stuff also, but in a simple way, but these two things are different in that aspect. Like blockchain is having much more capability at that uh, scenario, something like this. So it is uh, basically, uh, we can call torrent also decentralized application. Yes, it is working as a decentralized only in, in a decentralized way only, right? It is working as a decentralized way only. But it is not immediate. Yes. Right. Anyone has any other questions? Any questions? Uh, one thing, you know, you mm -hmm. said when we write a smart contract, you showed an example for that, right? 
mm-hmm. for delivering a particular uh, item and getting that particular money uh, according according to it. So mm-hmm. for that particular scenario, we can create uh, different different ways also, right? Um, you, you can say that uh, uh, for also uh, real life example, like uh, I want to you no know, uh, uh, buy some laptop for mm-hmm. this only. For the I want this particular configuration. I made a smart contract regarding it, like mm-hmm. this configuration. This configuration. Then also we can use that uh, particular smart contract for specifically buying a laptop, right? You can definitely use it, but definitely it will cost you a lot. I will say because smart contract also comes with the cost. You have to pay in terms of gas. This is a oh, different. Uh, yeah, it's, you have to pay. Some you can think of it as as like whenever you are running a smart contract, you are actually paying mm-hmm. for. so if you are a owner of the smart contract you will not like that right that mm-hmm. whenever this smart contract is being called whenever a function is called from the smart contract you have to pay for it no oh, okay that yes, you can do that but that's the thing yeah. any else anyone else have any question okay so we can wind up this session i believe so i think we will meet tomorrow and do watch this movie this is a good movie i will highly recommend this movie this is a good movie okay So let's find up for today's session. Any feedback you want to give me, like whether I was too fast, whether I was too slow, anything that you want to talk.